next speaker for the day is Rijita Agarwal. Rijita found her calling in the art classes of Rishi Valley and discovered a world of design at La Salle College of the Arts, Singapore. She comes today to invite us to think about design, the entire experience of design, how it's everywhere, how it's in everyone. So we present to you Rijita Agarwal. I would like to share with you my journey into design. I feel every step I took guided me towards the right direction. I studied at Rishi Valley School, which is an alternative education system, where I was allowed to learn through my experiences rather than through textbooks. To really understand the community, the people, and the place, you have to live within it. We grew our own food there. We disposed of our own trash there. It's a self-sustained world created by those who are living within it. Such an open system, similar to the one here at Anaikati, allows children to stop, stare, feel, think, and contemplate. Whether I was bird watching on a Sunday morning or painting a wall outside my classroom, learning was an experience I chose to make. I chose what I wanted to do and how much of it I wanted to do. This helped me gravitate towards things I like doing and helped me realize what I want to do later on. So I explored avenues such as poetry, pottery, and teaching and trekking. This led me to realize that I want to pursue a career in these sort of arts. So I went to Singapore to study design. What is design? Design is a familiar word nowadays. We look at something and we're like, I like the design of that, but what does the word design really mean? Everything around us has been designed for us, and let me show you some examples of this. This is an example of architecture design. The LaSalle building is six organically shaped buildings with alleyways and inways which were inspired by the geological formation of canyons and the flowing of lava. It's similar to the flow of creativity of the students and professors within the college. This is an example of interior design. The glass table that you see is perfect for any cluttered room. It doesn't add any clutter and in fact adds light to a dark room. This is an example of good product design. When you normally stir your cup of tea, you use a spoon. Two young French designers decided to insert a ceramic ball at the bottom of a cup, so you simply have to lift it up and twirl it to stir your tea. This is a good example of graphic design. Graphic design is essentially a visual language to communicate a message, and it's what I'm studying. This was done for a restaurant called Food for Thought, which is good food for a good cause. All the money that you pay goes towards an education fund for children in Africa and India. And these are the mats that they place below their plates on their tables. And it says, feed good food, because no child should starve in a world of happy meals. The visual language is key here in communicating the message. This is a type of design we're all more familiar with, which is fashion design. This is the Balmain Spring Summer 2013 collection, which is inspired by a wicker chair. Who would look at a wicker chair and think that the textures, the patterns, and the materials could inspire an, an entire range of clothing? So as you can see, design is in everything around us, whether it's the buildings we live in, the furniture we sit on, the things we use in our hands, what we read, what we wear. But as consumers and as non-designers, we just see these things available to us. We see them available in shops and on TV. But we don't realize what goes into the making of these things. Each of these things has been designed for you, and each of these things has a story behind it. But design is not just fancy products. It's a problem-solving way of thinking. For example, there's social design, political design, environmental design. If a designer decided to make a braille watch for a blind person, that's good social design. But our current education system doesn't seem to have space for this sort of design thinking. We readily get into line to become engineers, doctors, lawyers, without thinking, what do we really want to do? What do we really like to do? What really makes a difference? 
What we don't realize is that all of us have creativity within us. All of us possess an imagination. We're all born with this imagination. As children, when we're told a ghost story or a fairy tale, we don't question its rationality. But in school, we're taught not to believe anything that's irrational or illogical. Um, so I would like to tell you, as we grow up, don't let rationality kill your creativity. I see a need for creative thinking in today's world. I feel that the notion that we're shifting from the industrial age to the information age is outdated. I feel we're now shifting from the information age to the conceptual age, and there is a need for conceptual thinkers. Let me explain this to you scientifically. We're all born with a left brain and a right brain, but despite scientific evidence, we choose to believe that the left brain is superior, that logic and analytical work is superior, and we forget the functions of the right brain. But what we don't realize is that the right brain is something we all also possess. Left brain work today can be done much faster by machines, by computers, by codes, by programs, but it's right brain work like design, thinking, holistic learning, passion, play, empathy, humor, that cannot be emulated by any machine. This sort of change is being adopted by many educational systems. For example, Yale medical students have to go to Yale art school to increase their observation power so that they can pay greater attention to patients' details. Even in Japan, many schools are abandoning conventional academics and looking at holistic learning with artistry, play, and spirituality. So there is a need for conceptual thinkers like designers. Products are no longer enough. People look for meaning. Um. So cur in current society, there seems to be a need for MFAs rather than MBAs, people who have uh, an all-round skill set. So I look at myself sometimes and wonder, am I doing the right thing? I mean, would it have been better to follow a conventional path, go to a more conventional school, and get a more conventional degree? I mean, I'm 21. I've lived away from home for nine years. I've been pursuing my passion. I've been pursuing art, pursuing design. But then when I look back, and look at what I've studied and look at the fields I've worked in, like graphic design and advertising and fashion, I realize that all the fun and the learning and the experiencing happens when you really pursue your passion. So the point of this talk today was to tell all of you that design is something that is everywhere around us and design thinking is something that is needed. If any of you wish to pursue design as a career, there are very well-defined degrees in universities abroad as well as in India. And for those of you who don't choose to pursue it as a career, design thinking is something you can inculcate every day into your life. For example, so many people in this room must be wearing a pair of jeans. But have we ever wondered, where do jeans come from? Why were they made? Who were they made for? It was, in fact, Levi Strauss in 1873 who had this tough cloth, and he realized that farmers and miners needed this cloth because they needed tough pants. So he started making jeans. Supposedly, the sails of Christopher Columbus's ship were made of denim because it was that stronger cloth. So look at things around you and question. Look at a guitar, look at a contact lens, look at a chair, a table, a hanger, and understand why it was made, who it was made for. Soon you'll realize that you're looking at good design and bad design. You'll realize there are things that are making your life simpler and things that are not so good at making your life simpler. You'll start noticing interiors, um, graphics, fashion, everything around you. You'll be more perceptive to things around you. There are international awards and associations that reward people on these ideas. If you see something and you don't like the design of it, you can just sketch it out or take a photograph or draw it on a napkin and send it in to these people. So I would like to end by saying that there is a need for design thinking. We're living in a world where things are constantly evolving, changing, and being redesigned. So you can either stand by and watch all this happen, or you can be a part of the design revolution. Thank you. Mm -hmm.